for tape, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is a Friday evening service of May the 24th, 1996, of the Memorial Day Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Bill Smith is the speaker for the evening. Amen. Praise the Lord. Get this, get this te Texan. Oh, well, he's not a cowboy, but he, he wears them cowboy boots, you know. <laughs> I, I was looking for him last night to come and join us for a little while, and I went in the room to look for him, and there was his clothes, and there was his boots, and there was no bill. <laughs> and I come back upstairs and I said, you know, I'm not for sure, but I wonder if Bill got raptured. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're so thrilled to see God move in action here tonight and to meet this need because this is what it's all about. You know, we're not takers, we're givers. Praise the Lord. And so we're so grateful. And I tell you, this camp has meant so much to me. Uh, I've, I've been crying out now for several years. I want to be real. I want to be right. And in this meeting, I believe that we saw a balance of the word of the Lord. I believe that Brother Norm this afternoon brought such a solid word, uh, uh, a balance in, as Brother uh, Duran brought us such a message of faith this morning. And then Brother Tommy last night, as he ministered uh, of, of the Lord last night, the glory of the Lord. And so uh, I tell you folks, we're crying out for a balance in God. Uh, and I don't want no quick fix, hocus pocus thing, but I want to be real. And I want to see God's people be real. Uh, we were talking this afternoon, and uh, there is so much junk out there. It's out there from soup to hay. And uh, you start talking about the things of God, and sometimes I said, Oh, God, as we begin to look at these things, and then they're going to think that we think that, that we're the only one that's right. Because... I like what Brother said this afternoon. Every one of us and none of us have 100% truth. But we're reaching out to be right in God. Praise the Lord. Tonight I want to talk to us about a pure seed. But before we go into that, I want you to look with me in Romans. It's a very familiar scripture to all of us. And Romans chapter 8 and verse 19. Now, how many knows through the eons of time, around the turn of the century, there's been another wave of God's glory? Through the Wesleys, Martin Luther, all the way down even to Columbus discovering America in 1492. And all the way down. And you know, I try to get these things together because, you see, they were teasing me about being raptured. Well, I used to tease Glenn that uh, when I came down to Lake Hamilton, I was going to preach on a rapture of the church. <laughs> so I knew he didn't believe that, and he knew that I didn't believe that because I've searched the book, and God has never used any escapees. He's never used any deserters. He's always took us through and never took us out. He took us through. And so this is where we're going today. But as we have studied the Word of the Lord for all of these years, and uh, I know back in Pentecost, he said, Brother Smith, are you Pentecost? No, I went beyond Pentecost. And now I'm heading for the tabernacling of God, that God and man is co-mingled together. 
Hallelujah. It's no longer that God is my co-pilot. He is the pilot. Praise the Lord. And so as I look into the Word of the Lord and I begin to, uh, as I was going in school, uh, uh, maybe I, did, I, I butcher two languages, the English language and the Spanish language today. But anyway, I was always good in math, and I would always figure things out in math. And you know, the Hebrew calendar is only 360 days. Now, I know that we look into the Word of the Lord, and Jesus spoke one day to his disciples, and he said, Say ye not four months, and then cometh harvest. But look ye out on the field, because it's white already. What was he saying? Four times thirty. Uh -huh. Four times thirty would be a hundred and twenty. In your Bible, a hundred and twenty is the end of one age, but it's the beginning of another age. Amen. Now, you and I, there are a lot of people that I'm meeting with in our assembly as well as across the land as we minister. And back in Pentecost, I always heard about the two thieves, and Jesus hung on the cross between the two. Then I heard that one of the thieves, he was a good thief. Well, I ain't never found a good thief. <laughs> Come on, I never found one. Amen. And so he said, this good thief, you know, said, you know, he was so good. He said, said Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. Come on. Every one of us, we've been looking way over yonder. But Brother Bill, what that thief did not understand, Jesus was in his kingdom. He wasn't going to be. He was. Now, many times we put things off and we're going. But Brother, I believe that I'm hearing the Spirit of God that's saying to us today that the hour has come. And so if we put it off, we've only put a glorified rapture because everything was going to be happy when we get over there. Brother, I'm having some kingdom to set up the kingdom in today. Now, so if we're four years off, along about October, the Passover month, can be the year of 2000. Come on. All right. How many has ever read John chapter 7? I want you to know the Bible says in John 7 that Jesus went up secretly in the time of feast. Am I in the book? All right. He went up secretly. But Brother Glenn, what God is doing, because I believe that this year nobody's turning green. Nobody's ears is going to get big like Spock. Come on, you've watched Star Trek. Nobody's ears is going to get big. Nobody's going to be the incredible hawk and turn green. But brother and sister, you and I are approaching a day of the manifestation of the Son of God. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to have to wait. I know we can't force birth this thing, but brother, we can get in order to bring it about. Now, what is the manifestation? I'm glad you asked. Because of verse 19, for it says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth, waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. What is the manifestation? I'm glad you asked. It means the placing of a son. The placing of a son. Now, you know what I'm seeing God bringing together through Brother Glenn. I remember when Brother Glenn came to me in Fort Worth, Texas. God woke him up in the night and said, You put on all of the brochures, deliverance and declaring the kingdom. Brother Norm, we're not coming into no kingdom loaded down with demons and curses and all of these things. And that's why God's bringing a balance. 
He's bringing a balance that we can come out from under these things, that we can walk in a manifestation of God. Yes, now, I was crying out because we minister that travel a lot. Our altar many times is in our automobile. Thank God for interstates. Thank God for cruise control. If we didn't, we'd get those bells ringing after us. Set that cruise control running down the interstate, talking to God, tears flowing. And I said, God, you said you're raising up deliverers. You're raising up sons of God in the earth that's going to rule this nation with the iron rod of iron. And I said, God, I'm having a time. Of even running 4104 Shack Court, and all that I have is me and my wife, grandson, and two dogs. God said, Son, I'm not looking for you to rule, but I'm looking for you to be a man that I can rule through. I can rule through you. That you'll be totally committed, totally surrender, that I can rule through you. What is he doing? He's coming to a people that he can reveal himself through a people. And now we keep waiting, waiting, putting it off, putting it off. Brother, what an if I am right. Now, you say, but Brother Smith, you don't know the day or the hour. I'm very aware of that. But, brother, the Word of God tells me in Matthew, says, when you see the fig tree putting forth leaves, you know that summer's nigh. Brother uh, Norm, we know that we're living in the season of it. Now, what are we going to do? Are we going to continue praying? Praying. I remember one time there was a young man right here on this floor right here. And Brother Glenn had delivered this young man. And he had delivered this young man. He came back and Brother Glenn, you had a sling. He said, I, next time I'm going to use a tuba for on you. Brother and sister, I believe that we need to walk in deliverance in God. When God is delivered and set free, and I thank God for what I've heard in this meeting, in prayer and fasting and getting in position to be delivered and set free, because that's what's going to bring the manifestation. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, that's sermon number one. Turn with me into the book of Exodus chapter two. I tell you. I'm so excited. I never will forget. We got a brother here from Beaumont, Texas, don't we? And I never will forget the time when I was in Beaumont, Texas, in my 20s. A man, a preacher looked at me. He was older. Of course, I thought then when you're 40 years old, my God, you're ancient. You know, when we were in our 20s, we thought 40, my, you're ancient. But now, we see, when you're 40, you just started living. He told me, he said, when you get a little older, you'll cool down. Come on. He said, you'll cool down. He looked at me and he said, son, get you five messages that you can memorize and you evangelize and you go to every church and you get where you can preach that message word for word. I looked at him because, you know, I knew everything. I said, sir, do you mean to tell me that God's gone out of business? There is no fresh corn that's being grinded today. There is no bread that's coming out of the oven today. Brother and sister, I want you to know we're living by the true bread of life that's coming out of the mouth of the eternal God today. Now let's notice Exodus chapter 2 verse 1. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took a wife of the daughter of Levi. All right. And the woman conceived and bare a son. When she saw him, that he was a goodly child. Now, what were they? After a pure seed. Now, brother and sister, today, why 
Why are we having these meetings? Why is God allowing different ministries to come together? Because every ministry has a part to building the kingdom of God that we're going to produce a pure seed. Hallelujah, God. We're going to bring deliverance to groaning and prevailing humanity. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Went to the house of Levi and took a lady that was a Levi to bring forth a pure seed. Now, go with me into 1 Samuel. And I want to pick up a, another scripture here in 1 Samuel, chapter 1. And let's notice something here in verse 5. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion. And in your margin in the Hebrew it says a double portion. But now let's notice. For he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. Now I want to tell you something. I feel that many areas, even the womb of our church at home, I see an area that God has shut up the womb because we tried to bring forth many different kinds of children out of the family of God. Brother and sister, I want you to know I'm hearing God say, I'm tired of that order and now I want to bring forth a pure seed of God. I want to bring one in my likeness and in my image today. Now, but notice something here. We all know this story. But her and her adversaries also provoked her. Sore for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore she wept. And she went on a fast, Brother Norm. What did Brother Norm say this afternoon? You know, I've heard of this man for many, many years. But I thank God for the honor that I met him. I even live next door to him now. Now, fast. Oh, Brother Smith, if you fast, that's old order. Brother Smith, if you have an altar in the church, that's old order. But you know what I found out, Brother Bill? The pattern the last night before he went to Gethsemane, he prayed all night long. Yes, and brother, you will never exceed the pattern. He said, oh yes, John 14 said, these things, yeah, you're doing greater than I do because I go to the Father. Not in quantity. Not in quality. In quantity. Because he's bringing many sons to glory. Amen. Many sons to glory. Brother, when in the man that had the withered hand, God told him to stretch it forth. Brother, the book said it was as whole as the other. You can't add to that. Amen. That's perfect. But now, went on a fast. Went on a fast. All right. Now, she did not eat and then said, El can I? Her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why? Is in thine heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than the sons? All right. I want to skip on down now just for a little bit. She wept sore. All right. But in verse 11, and she bowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaiden and remember me and forget not thine handmaiden, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Now, how many knows his other wife is having a child, as it were, for every nine months? But Brother Glenn, can any of us give a name of any of those children? That were born unto her. Banana. Can any of us give, tell you of the name of any of the children? No, sir, we cannot. But, brother, here is one order that's passing away. Here is a 
man that is getting aged, he's getting blind, and he's falling off the fence backward. But there is a growing man. Hallelujah. His name is Samuel, and not one word of his is falling to the ground. And brother, I'm looking for the place in God that every word that we speak is going to be held up by God. That it's not idle talk. It's not idle message. It's not playing around on a bunch of junk. But it's established by the word of the Lord. Amen. Just give me a man, child. I'm willing to fast. Yes. But you know, we that have big church buildings... They said, if you'll just give a, have a program, just have a program. Let me tell you something, folks. It's come the end of entertaining Amen. God's people. Amen. Now we're going to have to produce Amen. the ways of God. Amen. Come on, we've known the acts of God. But now God is asking us to produce His ways. All right? Now, so then what do we see? We see a man-child is being born. But for the sake of time, we're going to have to go on. Go with me now to John, St. John, chapter 1. And I want us to look here at the Word of the Lord. John, chapter 1. And let's see here what the Bible says. All right? Let's, let's just begin at verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, come on. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. I was so thrilled this afternoon. When I heard Brother Norm talk, he said, I believe in healing. And he said, and we all know that healing is the children's bread. But then we went, made another step over it. He said, but I believe in divine health. Amen. I want you to know today I believe in divine life. Yeah. I talked to us last night about the enemy trying to wear out the saints of the Most High God. Our convention was all set up, ready to go in March. Sunday before convention starts, Monday, I pull out from the church, sitting at the signal light, waiting till it changes. A car in front of me went ahead. I follow behind the car to make my turn. And a car from the opposite direction ran the signal light and came into that big old heavy cat of ours and just pushed it sideways. And push my shoulder and everything. Hit me right on the door and go it all into me. With two other ladies, elderly ladies, 80-something years of age, in my car with me. All of these things happen, you see. So, then the insurance company said, the ambulance all running. We didn't call none of them, but they all heard it and they came running. Emma said, we got to take you to the hospital. Said, you are hurt. Said, look at your shoulder. I said, I'll be all right. They got out of my way, and I took my car. Even though the wheel was running sideways and everything like this, I just gripped it tight. I only lived three miles from there. I drove it to my house and put it in the yard. Then the others went to the hospital in the ambulance. So then they said, look, you've got to go for the insurance purposes. So... After they all went, I went to the house and I got my car that's sitting out there. I went to the hospital in it. They said, we want to check you over. They said, how many surgeries have you ever had? I said, none. What's your family doctor's name? I don't have one. I'm sorry. And then they said, we want to check your vital signs. I said, okay. I said, well, people pray to have blood pressure and heart rhythm like you have. Say, you ain't never had a surgery. You ain't never had a doctor. And, you, and your vital signs like it. I said, yes, sir. Because the doctor that I have, he's better than all doctors. So then they transferred me. Come on. They said, we've got a mental case now. So they transferred me. I go up there and 
I go to another doctor. Nurse comes up there and she said, I'll take your vital sign. Okay, here I am. Get with it. How many surgeries have I ain't had none? What's your doctor's name? I don't have one. Take your vital sign. Said they're perfect. I said, What else did you think they would be? What else do you think they'll be? Because our God does not make no mistakes. Brother, what God does is perfect. Now I'm trying to get this man in position that I can walk in line with the pattern. With the pattern. Now, all right, the Word was made flesh. And oh, now let's read on. In Him was life, and the light was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. Come on. I found out, as we've been in the bread ministry feeding the poor, the hungry, in Fort Worth for now for about six months or a little bit longer, going from the bakery, went in there and... A lady from the Baptist church, there's three of our churches, two Baptists and ours. We are in the program together. So we all get a third of the bread. And they, so this one lady, she, she just got two cases of my bread. And I said, well, if she needs that worse than we do, let her have it. So then a need come up. I'm not a holy Jew. Neither am I super spiritual, but brother, I can walk in this book and I can begin to speak words unto those people. So they came around and they was having some problems. So I said, well, let's just pray right here. So we gathered around and laid hands on them. And I want you to know now they're always looking to see if I'm going to get my fair shake. So one lady's 82, and she says, I'm doing pretty good for 82. You're all, and I went over and I said, Sister, I said, God has smiled upon you, and I present another, and I lay hands on you. I impart another blessing to you. You know what I'm supposed to do when I get back home Monday? I'm supposed to go to praise service with them. Hallelujah! Brother and sister, it's time that this fruitful bow to get over the walls of the denomination and the religious systems in the world today. It's time, hallelujah, because why? I believe that we're walking with the truth from God. Remember Joseph, the fruitful bow that ran? The branches went over the wall? Come on, folks. What is wall? Denominational barriers. Religious orders. But God's calling a people now that will walk in the truth and walk into this. So, there's another, and his name is Cook. It's Bill Cook. And he came up here to me the other day because, you see, I'm a fisherman, me and my wife. So he said, Bill Smith said, I'd like to spend the day with you. He's the deacon in the big Baptist church. Over 3,000 people, members in the church. He said, Bill, I need to go fishing. I just need to spend the day with you. Then he said, my daughter is the missionary secretary at the church. Uh, Tuesday, would you come and speak to our missionary group? Come on, folks. We're not a holy Joe, but to take the Word of God and go over these barriers with the truth of the living God and show the pure seed of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, you see, I don't know, but they were. Remember, they started stealing the bread from it first. Now, get a load of this. Fasten your seatbelt real tight. Last Tuesday, she walked over there and she said, Brother Smith, I brought you an extra glass of ice here and said, I've got some distilled water. I said, I wanted just for you to just have a drink of my water. 
Come on, folks. God will give us favor if we will walk this thing out. Hallelujah, God. God will give us favor if we'll be what God's called us to be. You don't have to compromise. Come on. Now, we're talking about this pure seed. All right? Now, let's, let's skip on down just a little bit. <clears throat> In verse 13 now. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but born of God. Now, do you ever have to change what you believe? If you haven't, you sure do need to. I remember, how many remembers the Garden of Gethsemane experience? You see, we were sold out in the Garden of Eden, but we were redeemed back in the Garden of Gethsemane. There was two gardens. But in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus cried out and he said, It's not my will, Father, but thy will be done. Nevertheless, thy will be done. And you know something? Before I knew any better, I said everything that was of Mary in him was crying out. And brother and sister, I declare unto you today that there was nothing of Mary that was born of Jesus. And Mary was the type of the church, and the Holy Ghost overshadowed her and pregnated her by the Spirit of God. And that's what the Holy Ghost is overshadowing you and I today, and impregnating us with the pure seed of God. Hallelujah. What is he saying? Remember Hebrews? The true tabernacle. The true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. Huh? Now, which was not born of the will of man or of the will of the flesh, but it was born of God. Now, for many years, I felt like that night... You see, I knew nothing but of Pentecost. And my wife was Baptist. And so I told her one day, I said, God will forgive you for being Baptist if he'll forgive me for being Pentecost. So, and when she got filled with the Spirit, I got saved all over again. Come on! And you know something? I never will forget when I began to see her. Bring forth fruit unto God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother, how many of us today are contaminated with this old fleshly man of ours? How many of us are contaminating with the things that we're offering into this? Brother and sister, today we're coming till we're being born of the Spirit of God. I thought when me and my wife, when we went to the altar, and we were saved, and I said that night, I said, God, I've been so no account. And I'm staying here if it takes two weeks. I'm staying here till you get through with me, because you're going to fix me up. I ain't leaving. I began, and I didn't know, Brother Glenn, how you're supposed to taper off from anything. Come on. I thought when God came in my life, that was the end. Right then and there, I began to take care of the habits. I began to take care of the language and to clean up the mind. And brother and sister, that night before I ever knew that there were prophecy, I was saved, filled with the Spirit, and stood and prophesied that night, and I knew not what it was. Brother and sister, I want you to know why. Because God's doing a quick work. Hallelujah to God today. He's bringing forth a pure seed. That's not born of man. Then as I, my wife and I, we went to the altar, I thought, you know, that's, well, we're all right now. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. But then I did not understand that there is a difference between knowing Jesus as the Lamb in my life or knowing Him as the Christ of my life, the Lord of my life, not just my Savior, but my Lord. 
my king, not coming to be king of kings, but king of kings now. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, which was not born of the will of man, nor of the will of the flesh, but of God. Hallelujah. All right. Now, go with me into the book of Matthew. I guess Matthew's back the other way, isn't it? All right. Matthew chapter 13. I heard Brother Tommy Cook saying the other night, talking about the, the thirtyfold, the sixtyfold, and the hundredfold. Maybe you don't like that term. Maybe you can handle it better if it was the glory of the sun, the glory of the moon, and the glory of the star. Now, which way you want to slice it? It's still the same thing. So, now let's notice something here. All of my life, I heard about this parable, Matthew thirteen thirty one. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it was grown, it is a grace among herbs and become a tree, so that even the birds of the air came and lodged in the branches thereof. Now, I thought that was so wonderful. I want to tell you something. If you want to know why I'm all messed up, I was born in Oklahoma. I grew up in California. And I've been in Fort Worth, Texas since I was a teenager. Now, me and my wife was great gardeners before we went into the dog business. That's Brother Glenn by him taking care of my babies. We were gardeners, and we knew everything about gardens. So one day, we got our backyard all tilled up real good. We bought the peat moss. We got everything from Canada. You know, it came in from Canada. And we got it, and we tilled it all in, made the ground real soft and everything. And you know, Dr. Noah, we went out there and we planted. We planted some yellow crookneck squash, and then right next to them, we planted some zucchini squash. And then over a little bit, we planted some mushmelons. What do you think we had? We had crookneck squash with zucchini spots all over it. We had zucchini squash with yellow spots all over it. And the white and the mushmelons, they were nothing. Why? Because it mixed. It mixed together. But, brother, I hear about, oh, this is the largest tree, the smallest seed, and it outruns uh, the odds because of the ground is so much greater. But, brother, you plant mustard anywhere you want to plant it, it won't mix. It will not mix. Brother and sister, today, why do you think God's bringing forth a pure seed today that won't mix with the systems of this world, that won't mix with the flesh, that will bring forth the great order of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You didn't think a little old preacher bigger from Texas no bigger than I am. Get that tough, did you? Brother Jack Harris said, that's the biggest little man you've ever got a hold of. Hallelujah. But won't mix. Hallelujah. How many know what book of... I tell you, didn't Brother Parrish minister out of the book of Galatians? So beautiful today. Oh, it's so beautiful. But oh... I look in there and they said, the flush, the flush is, we tease them sometimes. They said, how are you doing? I said, I think my flush is acting up a little bit. The flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh because they're contrary. Brother and sister, what's happening? God's bringing forth his likeness and his image in the earth. All right? So now, the mustard seed, this is a parable of the kingdom. It doesn't mix. But a cow, we can just plant it out there, and it doesn't mix. And you know, those Baptist folk, they just, they just stand around and they just look. I don't try to be smart, and they'll go up there and start trying to quote a scripture, and they don't know where it's at. Come on. Come on. They don't know where it's at. 
This is why that we're supposed to be able to give the answer of the hope that lieth in us. This is why that Paul told Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So we begin to give them word, not being smart or on an ego trip, but being humble, because the odds is that much. And what are we doing? Every day we're winning them over. And now Tuesday, I'm supposed to go to a praise service with them. Come on. At their church. Hallelujah. So you see, what are we doing? I don't know. What in if God breaks out in that place? What in if God breaks out in there? Come on, folks. Now, what are we talking about? Oh, I'm supposed to be a holy Joe. Come on. Now, it was said, I believe it was Brother Tommy Cook. Talked about the parable. What well, didn't you, Brother Tommy Cook, in Matthew 13, uh, the night last night? He talked about the wheat and the tares growing together. You know what you've been doing here in the day services? You've been taking the tares out. Come on. How many know many times the tare looks just like the wheat? But the only thing about the tare, it's always got the leaves pointing up to get the, the eyes. And the wheat always bowed down. Come on. Doesn't that sound like some on an ego trip? Oh, you got to see me. But brother, when you're coming into the pure seat of God, we do this like John the Baptist said. He must increase that I decrease. Now, let's, let's look a little further now. So brother uh, uh, Tommy said, let it go together. Turn with me now into verse 36 of the same chapter of Matthew 13. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went unto the house of his disciples. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the terrors of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are what now? Now remember, earlier you read in Matthew 13, and the good seed is the Word of God. Is that right, Brother, Kurt, Brother Tommy? The good seed is the Word of God. But, brother, there has been some development. Come on. There has been some growing up now. And said, so now the good seed are what? The children of the kingdom. Hallelujah! The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Now, what is happening? You say, I don't believe it. The Word is becoming fresh again in these earthen vessels of ours. This treasure is in this earthen vessel. And the Word is becoming flesh. My God, it's nine o'clock? How long have I been up here? Now, the good seed is the children. Of the kingdom. To let it go together. Because we was not mature enough to separate it. But now, you see, we've got the nose. What is the nose? I'm glad you asked. That's the discernment of the body of Christ. We're getting the nose exercised now. And we're discerning the body of Christ. And the good seed now is the children of the kingdom. I'm talking about a pure seed tonight. I'm talking about the seed of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is this too heavy? No. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the terrors are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. And the harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are angels. Now, what is? Did not we read in Malachi before the great and noble day of the Lord, I will send my messenger, and he shall suddenly come to his temple. Yeah. Is that the book? All right. What is angels? They are messengers. Messengers. What does Revelation chapter 1 say that angels are? They are the pastors of the seven churches. And he's walking up and down in the candlesticks of the church. Brother and sister, there is a messenger that's coming from God today with a message to the church. 
We're not interested in a sermon no more. No more notes. Brother, we're looking for a message from God to the church that will bring the church out of the place she's in until she's in the full of God's glory. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14 said, The glory of the Lord shall fill the earth as the water covers the sea. Then he said in Numbers chapter 14 verse 21, when he's talking to Moses, he said, Moses, as truly as I live. Come on, this is God. As truly as I live, the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. Hallelujah. How is it going to do? I'm waiting on Jesus. When you come into your kingdom, Lord, remember me. Come on, folks. I am tired waiting. You say you're going to force birth this thing. I know better than that. But God's already told me, he said, son, you get down to the goal line. You get to the goal line and you'll be knocking. And when that veil is open and then you walk through. Hallelujah. You walk through when it's open. I know I can't force birth. You see how come I know? You see, you wonder why I'm like I am? I got five sisters and I grew up with sisters and no brothers. Now... My mother sent me to the chicken house one time to see about the, how the hen was doing. See if the eggs was hatching. She said, son, if they're just hatching, you leave them alone now. I got out there and one of these little chickens was having a hard time getting out of that hole. So I helped that chicken. You know what I did? I killed it. I tried to help it out of there. And brother and sister, you can't force birth this, but brother, you can present yourself as a living sacrifice unto God that's holy and acceptable unto Him, which is your reasonable service. And I want you to know, this is like Mary and Martha. And I know that there's a lot out there, Brother Glenn, that's rattling pots and pans. Remember Martha, and I know we've got to have Martha's, we've got to have Mary's. I think of this Brother Kyle here. He came to our church years ago. He probably has forgotten it. He came in there and hooked up our automatic worship, plumbed it in with hot and cold water at the church. Years ago, he probably forgot about it. But you look in 1 Corinthians 12, 28, and help us right in there with the apostles. Right in the same verse. But, oh, i got to be an apostle. Brother, I want to be what God wants me to be. What God wants me to be. No. So... Here's where that we're at, folks. We say we can't force this around. But I want to tell you something, folks. God is waiting. The husbandman is waiting for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it. And I remember reading another verse. The master is here and calleth for thee. Huh? Come on. Now, brother and sister, but Mary and Martha. Of course, Mary... Martha, she's just rattling pans. Come on. She's just rattling pans. But Mary, she sat at the feet of Jesus. And she took the costly ointment. She washed his feet. She wiped them dry with her hair. And the Bible says that that was a memorial that went out through the land. It's a memorial to you and I today, isn't it? Now... Here's where it is. Fasten your seatbelts real tight right now. How many remembers Mary Magdalene when the first day, and she goes at, in the dark before daybreak? Isn't that right, Dr. No? She goes there to anoint the body of Jesus. Guess what? She went to anoint the dead. But Mary... She anointed the living brother, and it went out for a memorial. And brother, God's calling you and I today to anoint the living. To anoint the living. Sure, she got caught. Anointing to anoint the dead, but he wasn't there, was he? No, he wasn't there. He had already risen, just like he said that he would. Now, let's notice something, folks. God is wanting to bring forth this pure seed. Turn with me now. Brother Tommy Cook says he likes to preach on that twelfth chapter of the book of Revelation. Turn with me to Revelations twelve. All right? And let's look here at the word of the Lord. In verse five. Now notice something. Let's go up to verse three. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. 
Now, that word wonder means sign. All right? And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, seven crowns upon his heads. Now, and he drew, his tail drew the third part of the stars. Now, I know that a lot of people says that the devil did what he did to the televangelist. But I don't agree with that. God was purifying his ministry. Some of those ministries will be greater than they've ever been before because God brought them down to humble them, and then he will raise them up. The stars has come down. We've got two in Dallas today. One's going to prison next month. He's going to prison next month in Dallas, Texas. And another one is in big-time trouble right now. But you know why he's in big-time trouble? He wasn't doing like that. his people here were giving tonight. Giving for the kingdom. They were giving to him to buy his yachts and to buy his over a million and a half dollar home. Come on. And little mothers that's on fixed income drawing Social Security sending that check to him and they don't even have a fan in their house. Now, I preach against that and I declare war on that, Dr. Noel. I declare, and any time that I'm trying to consume it to myself, you put it for sure that it's not God. Because we're going to do it for the kingdom of God. What do you think this here, a parking lot and this drive and all of this is for? It's for the kingdom of God. It's not for Brother Glenn. I know these folks. I've lived with them. They lived in my home. I know of no greater people than these two that I've walked with for years. Been in many states together, and I've walked with them, and I know these people. Brother, but this is what I'm talking about. It's bringing forth a pure seed. All right? Stood before the church and drew what? To do... To, to buy the child as soon as it's been born. And brother, isn't he doing that today? He's trying to wear out the saints of the Most High God. And it's a mental thing. What do you think's happened to Brother Jack and Sister Bobby? Two more of the greatest people that I know on the face of this planet. Amen. That I walked with that man for 33 years. 33 years. Drove and Preached as high as in seven states at one time with Brother Jack Harris. But you see what's happening. The enemy is trying to wear out Brother Jack. And you see, if you can get your word down mentally, you cannot get that word in your mouth that's going to speak your release. See, it's, it's the word that's in your mouth. It's neither even in thy mouth that's going to speak thy release. Come on. Hallelujah. You said, what do you know? I was drowning in a boating accident, going down for the last time. Enemy hops on my shoulder, and he says this to me. He said, you'll never live to preach and see the gospel that you've been preaching. You'll never see it to come into formation. I got so wholly violent. I said, you only devil, you. You ain't nothing but a liar. And I read the book, you're even the father of the liar. And I don't live by what you got to say, but I live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And I begin to swim faster. And the waves was carrying me down, down, and I come up and down. But I'm here tonight. Hallelujah! I'm here tonight. And I was in it for six and a half hours. And oh yeah, it was in summertime. Hello, how about the 19th day of December? How many knows water's cold in December? How many knows that I laid these hands on these legs when they were turning blue? And I said, God, get your blood to flow in these legs and keep them from where well, they won't turn blue and quit. I can't swim. Come on. I live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Come on. Don't take no offers that the enemy's got to give you. Don't take no offers. Live by the word of God. All right? And notice, and she brought forth a man child who was to rule the nations with a rod of iron and was caught up under God. And that word caught up in the Greek means seized. Seized. 
Now, I want to tell you something, folks. Those people that I'm ministering to tonight, that's been seized. But a Glenn has been seized. When you've been seized, you don't, you're not looking for Friday night payday, but you're going for the duration. You're going to see the fullness of God to come forth in these vessels. All right? I just won't take just a few more minutes because I've got to tell you everything I know tonight. <laughs> Chapter 14. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in the foreheads. Now, what is that? First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, says, but ye have the mind of Christ. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 said, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Come on. But now, here's 144,000. Now, some believe that's a literal number, and it may be. But I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt of being wrong. And I say 144,000 is 12 times 12, which is a spirit-guided life. Amen. Come on. A spirit-guided life. And the Father's name is written in the forehead. I know you quoted Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. But, brother, I'm here to tell you, it's getting from here down to here now, and we're going to walk it out in shoe leather in this earth. Amen. Come on. We've, ta we've talked a good talk, but now God's asking for a walk to match the talk. Come on. Now, 144,000 from Mount Zion. The Father's name written. Birthmarks. Now, you heard Brother Tommy Cook's or no? Who was that? I believe Brother Duran said, we are Israel today. But you see, the Apostle Paul said in closing out the book of Galatians, he says that we are the Israel of God. You see, that country in the Mideast over there, it never did excel to where God had redeemed for them to be. And many were overthrown in the wilderness because of unbelief. But there is a Israel of God, and Paul says, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hate to cuss on my last night being here, but I know that Schofield says that's a had of nine tails that he was whipped. Brother, that ain't what Paul is talking about. Paul's talking about he buried in his body the very nature and the characteristics of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. I bury my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here is on Mount Zion with the Father's name written in their forehead. All right? I'm going to skip down. Verse 3. And they sung, as it were, a new song, before the throne and before the four beasts, and the elders, and no man could learn that song, but the hundred and forty and four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. Now, fasten your seatbelt. How many knows the Bible said many are called, but few are chosen? Now, fasten your seatbelts real tight. God's reaching down in this congregation, and He's handpicking some for His army. He's reaching down and handpicking them. Brother, and I'll tell you, this is why I'm crying out every day of my life. Lord, I want to make my calling and my election sure. I know that heaven is real. I know that I'm saved. But I want to make full proof of my ministry. I want to be of those that has been handpicked for God in this earth. Hallelujah. Handpicked. Huh? When Brother Norm Parrish... When he took Peter and the other boy, what did he say, David? Paul. You know something? If he could have been old enough 
I was born in his family, and I was a parish. He'd just have to take me where he wanted me or not. But you know what? When he looked at Paul and Peter, he handpicked them. He said, I'll take them. And he adopted them, and they took his name. Brother and sister, this is what's happening today. God is reaching down in the family of God throughout the universe today, and he's picking up and picking out those that's handpicked. Yes, Hallelujah. We said, Brother Smith, what are you talking about? Well, you remember Samuel, we talked about the great man a while ago. But remember, he still had Saul in his eyes. Oh, Saul, you're head and shoulders, and you're so handsome, and you'll sure make a good king. So he looks at Elab. Elab, that's the one. Look how big he is, and he's, a, he's been in Saul's army all this time. You know, look at him. God said to Samuel, Samuel, I haven't called him. Sa Samuel, you're looking on the outward appearance, and I look on the heart. Samuel, I know something that you haven't found out yet. Samuel, under pressure, Elab's going to break down. He's going to break down under pressure. Come on, you said, oh, Brother Smith, I am so spiritual. How are you in emergency? That's where your level is. You're playing Holy Joel the rest of the time. Where you at in the emergency when the crisis comes, that's where your level is in God. Come on. Hallelujah. But, oh, yes, when all the bills is paid and everything's taken care of, oh, Brother Smith, I sure do have faith. Oh, yeah. But how about in the crisis? Whereabouts are you then? I never say, Lord, what am I going to do anymore? I never say that. I've been caught saying that. Lord, what am I going to do now? I never say that no more because I am the Lord's. I am His responsibility. Amen. Now, but see, this is where we're at. Now, notice what he said. Redeemed from the earth. All right? These are they are not defiled with women. Now, this year... This woman here is talking about the church system, the religious orders. Not defiled with the systems. Come on. <clears throat> of course, they told me, Brother Glenn, they said, How can you get along when you don't have a head somewhere to ask answer to? I said, I do. But he's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's my head, and the book says he's the head of the church. They said, but we have our headquarters. I'm not going to tell you because you think I'm cussing. He's in a city. We have our, and we have to report up there. I said, I report all the time to my head. I report to my head all the time. His name is Jesus. Now, these are they. They're the that follow the Lamb. They're not defiled with women. They are virgins. I'm talking about a pure seed. Yes. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever He goeth. What if He goes into the wilderness? All right? Now, these were redeemed from where now? From among men. You mean they've been handpicked? All right? Being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile. For they are without fault before the throne of God. Now, is this a pure seed? He went to Levi. He was a Levi with the Levi to take him a wife. I'm talking about a pure seed with no mixture. No mixture. A little bit of me. Or a whole lot of me and a little bit of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Brother, he is our pilot. Yes, sir. Yes. He pilots this ship. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, let's notice, oh Lord, just, just one more scripture, I promise. One more. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. He that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness 
doth he judge and make war. How many has ever read Revelation chapter 11, verse 15? And the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ. Now, folks, God is training us for warfare. But warfare is what's going to bring rest to this land. Listen, I don't know if you like your president or dislike him, but if you have two of him and two more just like him and two more like him, it's still not going to be the answer. The only answer for this world is for a manifestation of the sons of God that will set this thing into order. And we see everything around us collapsing. We ought to be rejoicing and shouting in God because God's setting the stage for us to take over. Come on. For us to take over. That He can rule through us. All right? Now, so do I need to explain who faithful and true is? Now, and he's on, a, what, he's on a white horse. Now, back 30 years ago, they told me that Jesus was coming back on a white horse. Now, I want to say, if you believe that, and if he wants to come on a white horse, he's God. He can speak one into existence. He can do that if he wants to. But, brother, that ain't what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a white horse that is a thoroughbred. And he's, why, he is the thoroughbred. Now, I know you wasn't too religious to watch the cowboys and the Indians. What kind of horses do the Indians ride? Paint horses. They're not a thoroughbred. There's a mixture. But here's a white horse. And, brother, could I tell you that he's riding this white horse today up and down the aisles of the body of Christ today? Hallelujah. Now... Notice what he said. His eyes were a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written, or a nature that no man knew but he himself. But he, and he was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Huh? Not born of man or the will of the flesh, but he's called the Word of God. Now, that's wonderful. But now let's read verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven in the realm of the Spirit followed him upon black horses. Huh? I want you to know what is he doing. These are they that's redeemed, that's following the Lamb whithersoever he goes. I'm talking about thoroughbred. When we get over to this order, there is no infantry in this warfare. God's raising up men and women that is equipped in God. And they that followed him were upon white horses. Could we say that 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Being born again, not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible seed, which liveth and abideth forever. Now, this is how that we're being born today, of the Word and of the Spirit. Now, at that altar, we was begotten of God. But now, after 33 years of preaching His Word, starting out very young, I'm being born of God every day of my life. Come on. And then, in closing the second time, the first week after convention, I was so thrilled three years ago. I just came in from a long trip up in the Carolinas. I got home and the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want you to get ready. I want you to go back to North Carolina. I thought, Lord, don't you know that I just got back? You know, sometimes we have to tell him because he doesn't know. <laughs> have you ever been that hard-headed? So, I went in and I told him, I says, Norma, the Lord tells me that i got to go back to North Carolina for this youth camp. And I don't even want to talk about it. That's what I told us. I don't even talk about it. But I want to tell you something. 
I had a little sister that was 16 months younger than myself, an alcoholic. And we grew up in a sheltered home when there was not even a cigarette being smoked. But she turned out to be an alcoholic. And I went to North Carolina the first day. I looked at that little sister of mine, and people said, I wasn't going to be ashamed of her. People said, Brother Bill, that's not your sister. I said, yes, that is my sister. So I wanted to set her free the first day, but God wasn't ready. You see, sometimes, you see, Moses was not ready to deliver the children of Israel, neither were they ready to be delivered. So throw the stones at Moses if you want to, but they weren't ready to be delivered either. So on Wednesday, God spoke to me and he said, this is it. I went down there and I laid hands on my little sister. God saved her, delivered her from alcohol. She comes and stays with me now. We have visits and all. It's just brother and sister now. Set free. But she lives in Oklahoma. She's a Brother Dale Copeland. Many of the people in this church know Brother Dale Copeland. Precious man of God. Precious pastor. So the week after the convention, my little baby sister, because, see, brother is out here in left field preaching the gospel across the United States of America, foreign countries, and we don't have time for with brother. She come coming over to me, but in the night. I'm so glad that we have a line open to the Father. In the Saturday night, I woke up in the night. I saw my pretty, she's the prettiest little lady that you've ever seen. Not because she's my sister, wait till you see her. The prettiest little lady you've ever seen. She come running toward my direction. And God says, son, she's going through with you now. And she wouldn't even call me, lived 10 miles from me, never even called me. When I hear from them, when I call her, never call me. That Sunday morning that this vision came on a Saturday night, I looked up and what do you think I saw coming through those big doors in that auditorium? My little sister come walking in. And I said, in a little while we entered into the heavens in worship. We worship, don't we, Brother Glenn? I'm telling you, we worship at our place. And we begin to enter in behind the veil of humanity. My little sister and I says, honey, come here. God told me that you was going through with me and you were running to take a hold of my hand and I was going to lead you on through. She says, brother, this morning before I got up, God spoke to me and says, this is your day now. This is your day. So you see, God doesn't do one thing halfway. He does it all the way. And then God gave me a word for her and says, daughter, you've come into the 11th hour but you know your pay is going to be the same because you're going through with us. Brother, this is what I'm seeing God doing today. Reaching out and touch lives that's had no part with us before. But God's turning them around. And I say it's time now that we begin to bring forth the pure seed of God. Stand with me. I'm sorry that I've been long-winded tonight. But I'll tell you, folks, God has spoke to my heart tonight. God said, I will even unstop ears, deaf ears here tonight on the word of the Lord. God said, I've opened up understandings here even tonight on the word of the Lord. Yes, and I'll tell you, folks, I'm asking God to seal this word, not because it's me. Perhaps it's been a poor delivery, but I'll tell you the word has been from our God. Father, tonight seal this word under this people tonight, Lord. God, that there will not be one word that will slip and fall to the ground. Father, anything that I've added or done of my own doing, erase it from their minds. But God, that which you have spoke, let none of it fall to the ground. But it will all be fulfilled in their lives. Listen, folks. I know I'm getting to be one of the old rats around the barn now. I've been doing this 33 years. October will be 34. But I want to tell you something, folks. It's time for change 
in your life and in the body of Christ. The order that you've been in has been finished. And God wants to bring you into a due order in Him that's going to bring forth life unto Him. In turn, God will bring life unto you. Hallelujah. Excuse me, sister. Ikatai ye tome ko mose itaye ko yande utaye mo ko saye kiti andorobosi. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, right now. Father, I turn this mind back to you, Lord. You said in your word you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. And God, I minister health unto this vessel tonight, Lord. I take dominion over that mind in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, I take dominion over every incurable disease that's in this congregation tonight. I speak a word against it tonight. I command every healable disease to be cursed tonight. And God, that your life to fill this people, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Daughter, thou dost sing the words of Zion. Thou dost lift the people up into another realm of my life. But you see, daughter, thou art in the season now, even upon thy bed. New songs will be birthed into thee that's never been sung before. Thou shalt be the one that shall stand and lead the people into another realm of worship. Because, you see, the song will be birthed of me, and it will be a me, saith I, God. And thou shalt even sing it as the tune that I doth give unto thee. So, daughter, it is into thee this day, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 My daughter and my son, thou did come here and thou didn't even understand a lot of things that was happening. But even this night, thy God has opened up thine understanding to behold my truth, saith thy God. Thou shalt get my truth now, line upon line, here a little and there a little, precept upon precept, shall thy God even feed thee. And son... Thy God shall even honor the gift that thou didst give unto him this night, saith the Lord. Thou shalt even be blessed and blessed and blessed. But, son, most of all, thou shalt go home another way that now come here, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Father, tonight in Jesus' name. Even as Caleb of old stopped the aging process. <laughs> God, that you will preserve this vessel, Lord. And Lord, that you'll go in with this generation, Lord. And God will praise you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, we preserve her tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Folks, remember this. Where there is no sin, there is no death. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. Come on. And when sin is finished, it bringeth forth, you see, all right. So where is God bringing us today? And that's why I sit there. They said, you get up here, you're supposed to sit with the preachers. Well, these are bigger preachers than I am. And I sit there and I said, God, I thank you. Because my eyes have seen what I've seen in this meeting. I said, God, you're bringing a balance to your body. 
<laughs> not way off in the left field in sonship because there's a lot of sonship that's corrupt to the core. <laughs> but God, you're bringing a balance in this body. And I said, Lord, I praise you for it. I praise you for it. Because, listen, we're coming into the leap, the depth, the height, and the depth of our God. Because we're coming to where it's four square, any angle that you look at us, you're going to see God. This is where God's bringing us to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Folks, I don't know what to do from here. I don't know what to do, Brother Glenn. Because God's walking up and down the aisles of this place tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Father, in Jesus' name right now, God set my sister free, Master. Oh, God set her free from every area of her life, Lord, that needs your attention tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, fill her with your fullness tonight, Master. Lord, bathe her in your love. In Jesus' name, be thou free from the top of thy head unto the sole of thy feet. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, you are. Daughter, thou didn't make a good choice, said thy God. Thou didn't make a choice within thy heart tonight to follow me, said thy God. And in doing so, I shall add days unto thy life, and I shall add happiness where there's been sorrow, and there's been confusion, but now I will bring rest unto thee, said thy God. And all of the turmoil, I shall bring rest in the place, said thy God. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 You haven't been able to lay hold of him in God. This is your night. All things are possible unto him that believe it. We're not rattling pots and pans tonight. Hallelujah. We're bringing you a truth from the living God Amen. that will set growing prevailing creation Hallelujah. how many remembers Mary and Martha that day you know Martha wanted to be very religious her brother died you know she said well she said, if you'd been here he wouldn't even die but now I want you to know I know the scripture I am very religious, but I know that he'll raise in the last day. I know he'll raise in the last day. But you know what, sister? He looked at her and he says, you're looking at resurrection in the heaven. I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. I am the life. Not going to be. I am. God's not going to be on the throne. He is on the throne. Folks, I don't know where to go from here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many has reserved for making total commitment unto God? You see, God doesn't have any unwedded willing ones. You're going to be willing if you're going all the way with God. You don't get drunk in your best. You have to make the choice to be in this. Right. You have to make the choice. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Father, I impart unto my brother tonight, Lord, that you said which we have received, we freely give unto our brother. Yes. God, that you will open up his understanding from this night forth. Yes. In 
in Jesus' name. I got there, you go young, the 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 young, I would sit there and eat that book and cry and wipe the tears off the pages and wear out the Bible. Then they would come and say, Brother Smith, which Bible school did you go to? I said, I went to that one on my knees in my bedroom. That's the one that I went to. And brother, this is the same thing will birth it forth within you is eating that book and becoming what that book says. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.